she a gold digger. She ain't messing with no broke, broke. Audiophonic Riddler for the ADD generation. America's first competition talk show. You're the hub. Good day. Welcome to The Hub. I'm your host, Joel Aaron, all this week long with Barry. And, uh, you know, NPR has really been in a world of hurt ever since uh, Valerie Schiller fired Juan Williams a few months back. Well, uh, earlier this week, um, you know, th- these are the people in your neighborhood, in your neighborhood, <laughs> in your neighborhood. They are blatantly on the far left uh, radicals. Now we know this because James O'Keefe, who was the same guy who dressed up like a pimp, Went in to rat out uh, Acorn uh, last year, year, year and a half ago or something like that. He's, he's in on this sting again now. This time he dressed up as a what? A Muslim? Muslim. He, he was with the Muslim something action center. And uh, th- this actually didn't exist, but he was smart enough to actually create a website. So when NPR looked to check them out, they, like, oh, they legitimized there. it. Yeah. And, so, and I mean, he, he, he went from, he, okay, last time he was a pimp, he ratted out Acorn. This time he's a Muslim, he's ratting out NPR. Next time he's a pixie, he's going to rat out the National Organization for Women. Watch <laughs> this happen. It's amazing this guy wears so many hats. What is he not? Um, uh, but he blew he th- he threw them for a whim, right? And and basically the executive who now who's now been fired, the guy has been uh, basically just went on a rampage against the oh, Tea Party yeah. movement and the and the left and or excuse me the right and oh, just a bunch of crazy people, what, a bunch what, of crazy what, people, yeah. gods and guns and oh. God and guns. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're we're very monotheistic, racist, bunch, so, and, you know, uh, yeah. So yeah, terrible yeah, people. Yeah, yeah very very terrible people. So James yeah. O'Keefe did a public service once again, and and now Oscar the Grouch <laughs> is more grouchy <laughs> because there ain't no Christmas bonus coming this year. Well, no prob- more funding. It probably didn't help. Oscar's not going to get his Christmas bonus because the guy from. PR also said, you know, we really don't need that federal money. Yeah. And so, like, oh, you're fired. It's good. Oscar does not, he's not happy about this. Elmo's not happy about this. Big Bird's not happy no, about no, this. No, no, no. They're eating less. You're out of here. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, the only thing that can make Elmo feel better is you've tickled him more. And that ain't happening anytime soon. Katy Perry no. might tickle him more. Katy Perry might do that. Mm. So I wish she'd, okay, forget it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm in line right after him. Okay, here's the uh, the, the the thing that's kind of interesting to me. Uh, this this could start a nuclear war before <laughs> it's all over. Because there are folks that beloved NPR, National Public Radio. I could care less either way. I like the alternate opinion. But speaking of nuclear war, yeah. um, you know, that NASA has now done a study recently uh, where they were wargaming, I guess, uh, you know, what the impact of a a nuclear holocaust could possibly be to the environment. I get mm-hmm. this is the, okay. It was an EPA funded study. It's an EPA funded study. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and Al Gore spent some of his carbon credits to, to, to back it up, uh, subsidize it. But so they come out with this study, which I believe, first of all, this is the reason why this is what happens when you cut funding for a group of scientists who get bored and start thinking up apocalyptic scenarios, this is the kind of natural result. You don't want these people bored. They're, they're highly cerebral, and you need them working on something. It's kind of like sending the Rome, Roman military off to war. Every time you turned around, if you're the emperor, else you get screwed. You might last six days before it was all over. It was getting pretty tight there. But So they, they get this result back Mm -hmm. and they find out that, uh, yes, it would create a carb, it would create a carbon cloud that would rise. Yeah. It's our whole nuclear winter thing that we used to hear about. Yeah. Yeah. The nuclear, but it would bring it back. Yeah. Which is a good thing, right? Because we're experiencing global warming. It stops that whole global warming thing. Well, I, I think it's global climate change now because they figured, well, it's not really warming. Okay. So basically the conclusion in the study was the earth has a fever and the best way to remedy this is to stage a nuclear holocaust, right? I, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Lower I, I mean, seriously, if, if you look at this, listen to Ted Turner, listen to Al Gore, and they're talking about this is the end of life as we know it within the next 20 years or whatever, and, and we're all going to die and be feasting on each other's bones and stuff. And Everybody turns into Bear grills. Exactly. Everyone. And finally, finally, there's a short-term solution to all of that. So basically, if, if your neighbors are coming over and starting to chew on your bones because it's too hot, then then President Obama can just like hit the button and, and set off some nukes, creates the cloud. and Cloud it, blocks the sun. Cloud blocks the sun. It gets cooler. Lowers so the temperature hot, by like two and exactly. a quarter degrees. So that'll work. 
and Celsius, it, which is more than Fahrenheit. No, but it's the less. thing is, you don't even have to necessarily put it on major cities. You could put it in places that are uninhabitable. Let's say, like Siberia or you know parts of Australia or New Jersey. But you, you wouldn't know? want to do this because I mean, in the space, I mean, think about it. You're only getting half the impact that you could have if you put it in isolated areas. Because not only could you lower the temperature literally within an hour, you could eliminate all those walking carbon bipad factories that have been falling all, walking all over. In about the space of about an hour, you could do the whole thing and accomplish the population control enthusiast utopia. So, so you're all suggesting with, put it on the major population centers. Put it centers. on the major population okay. centers. Okay. There, there could be a real benefit from that because, you know, if, obviously you cool off the earth and people are going to be complaining, oh, there's going to be less food. Well, they're going to complaining that it was too hot, there's going to be less food. So if there's less food either way, then you certainly want to have fewer people. So that, that makes sense. Well, the, and, and, and this is contradictory. This science is very, it's, it's, it's very confusing because you would think that, I mean, I would think that the nuclear holocaust would, uh, you know, that it would actually raise carbon levels and that, the, you know, we'd experience more global warming. Uh, so, you know, the question would then become, what, we, what does Manhattan get consumed by first, rising sea levels or a fireball? With, uh, I, frankly, I'm buying coastal property in, in uh, Arizona, you know, or Colorado, yeah, cause yeah. I, I think that's where the new coast is. That's where it's going to stop. Yeah, yeah. and, yeah. and uh, after it, fall, yeah, you know, it falls into the sea. Basically, this is another opportunity to sell cave space as well. It's like you, mm-hmm. know, you go down there, the population go, go down there, and they're there before the nuclear holocaust, so they have no bad memories of it. And Oh, that was Dr. Strangelove, yeah. But, um, yeah. <laughs> Well, but the, here's the thing. I mean, if if I'm a uh, if I'm a, we've already established if I'm into population control for the population control enthusiasts in the crowd, this is great. Mm-hmm. If I'm a eugenicist, on the other hand, though, for example, say say I engineer the perfect human being, right? That person is presumably a horticulturalist, in your opinion. Well, what if they get there and they find out that what we really need is more baby making factories to raise the carbon level now that it's all gone because we had this nuclear winter. And uh, and so they come back. They create the they create the the human carbon making factories, and they learn that uh, they learn that conservatives get off give off more hot air. The left's been saying this for a long time. Yeah. Conservatives give off a lot more hot air, so we need more conservative minded folks in the population. It screws the pooch as far as the left is concerned. So I think works in reverse of what their intended goals, right? So I, I think what you're saying is that in in the so case highly space, metaphysical. We, would, we would need to have. A high ratio of women to men. Yeah. And they would have to be of a very attractive nature so we could repopulate the earth. And then the men, and certainly a number of the women, should be conservative because they put out more hot air. This, again, yeah, yeah. Dr. Well, Strangelove I'm, had all of our. Yeah. Our and if I'm solutions. a eugenicist, I'm, I'm kicking myself about that point because what do I do? I mean, I, I find out that now we need more human beings. Do I just voluntarily fall on my sword because I was wrong? Or do I just. Leave it all to fate and the Almighty, which I don't believe in, and uh, just go ahead and do my duty and be fruitful and multiply. Absolutely, I, it, it presents a conundrum, I think, for the uh, for the eugenicists in the audience. And I know you're there; you're just not speaking up right now. Um, but we'll talk later. You can email me. The, the, but the whole thing here is uh, that, that we've got all this going on. And uh, what do you think? Uh, I mean, just looking at this, looking at this article. Um, why do human beings? Why do we feel this insatiable urge to model catastrophe? Because, I, I mean, ever since I watched uh, that the, great the Life After People. On yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. This, yeah. Ma- this I, 100 bucks says this is an episode within two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. The study, that well, would be cool. But there's lots of these post-apocalyptic nuclear, you know, the the boy and his dog and, and uh, the postman. There's all, all kinds of these. Um, and I, I think they make for a very good story. I don't think you're going to... I mean, people have been having what's the end of time for for millennia, yeah. And uh, this is certainly not new. It's it's just that we have better opportunities to create movies and scenarios and, and uh, thought processes and studies around them than we did in the past when we were yeah. like, living in caves. Well, I mean, you know, we show up on what December twenty second, uh, twenty twenty twelve, right? And we don't yeah, all. Yeah. I have we, a it doesn't all come to an end. Yeah. You know, and the Mayans were wrong, and and Nostradamus should, is rolling over in his grave. Half of Hollywood's just going to jump off a bridge. Yeah. You know, because I mean, they they've been building these scenarios up forever in every film. You know, I, I figure that's an election year. Yeah. So we have a new well. Actually, the new president doesn't go into office. So whoever is there in twenty twelve, oh, that'll be well. Obama. Depending on the outcome, that would yeah. Be, yeah. Depending on the outcome, no, not depending you know, on the outcome. If it doesn't Either happen way, December twenty second, it should be happening by yeah. About but January see, that's 25th. December twenty second, 
2012. So the inauguration would be in 2013. So yeah. that means Obama is kind of, you know, folks, I'm really upset with what's happening. Boom. Press I, the button and... Yeah, you know, nuclear football takes care of all of yeah. it. Uh, you know, the the whole thing, the whole thing, though, it, it, I guess, if, if I'm looking at this kind of a study and I'm, I'm looking at the apocalyptic scenarios, you know, we can lower the Earth's temperature, that would be a good thing. But would it really be a good thing? If I'm a guy, it's giving me one more excuse to do what I recently read in a study we do a lot of anyway, which yeah. is basically uh, watch TV and spend time at pubs. What do they say? The average man will spend how many hours in his lifetime watching television? I think it was 10,500 10, hours. The, the one I thought was interesting, it said the, the average average man, this was in England. Ultimately, would, throw caution um, to the wind in this situation. They would they would say, I'm sorry, 1.9 million times. And I was thinking, you know, it's probably an average. If they're married, they're probably saying it like about 4 million times. And if mm-hmm. they're not married, then they're only saying it. Like so if I'm a cable time. operator, if I'm Comcast or something like that, they I'm never looking say to, they're sorry. No, they, they never scream. do. Yeah. And and, 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 and this kind of a thing, impending doom, maybe the reason why we see so much of this on cable television, mm-hmm. because it's, it's, uh, it's, it's security for, for uh, renewal rates. Because, you know, if you're, if you're completely scared into catatonic state, uh, you sit there and watch TV. It's about all you feel good for doing. Well, I think if so. NASA comes up with a solution, because they did the study that said this will you know, address global warming. Mm-hmm. If NASA comes up with a solution that somehow involves building a bunch of new spacecraft that yeah. are going to go in space and improve them, I'd be a little bit, eh, wait a minute. Yeah. Well, they won't have to because uh, uh, what's got Virgin? Uh, Who? Uh, the Virgin Records guy. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. Branson. Branson. Richard yeah, Richard Branson. Branson. Yeah. He'll, fi- he'll figure that out first. If, there is, if there's money to be made in going to the moon and setting up shop there, Richard Branson will find a way. Leave it to the private sector. Whether they be liberal or not, they're capitalists when it comes to that. We'll see you tomorrow.